Schaefer. Uh, John Schaefer's here. We're still waiting on um, Mike Slavish. Mike Slavish is uh, Dan Ramsey here yet? Mike is I here. am. Yep, Dan yep, yep. On. I see it. No problem. Good to go. Mayor, it looks like we are good to go. And it is seven. Okay. It says seven o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting of Milton Plan Commission for Tuesday, June 23rd to order. And Abby, the first item with the roll call. Murray? Here. Paulson? Here. Ramsey? Here. Schaefer? Here. Slavish? Here. Tyson? Here. And Brars also present. Okay. So we are all here. And uh, the next item is the honoring Leaf Harbor service to the plan commission. So I'm going to start with this one. Uh, I first got to know Leaf Harbor through Boy Scouts well over 25 years ago. Our sons were in boy school. Boy Scouts Group 140 is a great listener. That is Lee. I mean, you can tell he listens and listens and listens. And after considering all viewpoints, he seeks creative solution to complex issues. And that's what he has done um, as long as I have known him. So Lee Herbert has served on the plan commission for well over 12 years. That that is pretty long tenure. Leaf has been strong advocate for the parks and conservancy lands, both in terms of uh, planning and protection of our existing resources. You probably have known that uh, Leaf loves to walk, dog, run, is everywhere. So as a frequent user of trails himself, Leaf Leaf has taken a keen interest in protecting them. And by the way, Milton has 27 and a half miles of trails and we hope we get even more of it. So in those 12 years, Leaf has been involved in a lot of things. And uh, he was heavily involved in the planning of community of Bishop Bay, and he has been active in several major development projects, including Tribeca Village, Milton Market, the Milton Center development, which as you can see has transformed the city of Milton altogether, and many more. And his experience as a landscape architect has been invaluable to the plan commission. Leaf has made a difference for the city and the citizens of Middleton. No question about it. We all owe him a gratitude for his years of leadership and service to the community. We will honor him and have a celebration of his service when the city council can meet in person. Hopefully it will can happen soon. So let's give a big hand to Lee for his years of service and leadership. Well, we have a Dr. John Schaefer. So this is the welcome to our new member, John Schaefer. Dr. John Schaefer, he's a emeritus professor of music, theory, and jazz at University of Wisconsin School of Music. So I have known John for a long time as well. I don't know how we got to know each other to begin with, I think maybe through the cattle ponds. They love going around the Piedmont Pond and uh, Sticker Pond. That's probably where I met him first. Well, of course, if you're passing by his house, you can be entertained to the music. Sometimes they have a quartet or a lot of great things happening there. So I'm gonna tell you about, uh, there was a, one, of the, one of the functions and uh, many of you know Professor John Wiley so he was, he's the former chancellor of University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's an amazing guy. 
And this is what he said about John at that meeting. When John came to UW Madison School of Music, the music department wasn't really all that well known. And John transformed that music department to the top ranked schools in the nation. I don't know whether it was number one or number two, it was certainly among the top five. So it was his leadership which make all the difference for the school of music and especially the music department. And that's a lot for coming from the chancellor of a university. I was pretty, I happened to be at that function and I was pretty amazed that what John had done. Well, after doing all that work, then John became the Dean of School of Music. He didn't stop there. He helped raise $26 million to build the Hamel Music Center on the campus. We have not gone inside yet. We are still looking forward to it. It's at the corner of University and Lake, University and I think that's it's University Avenue, Lake, Lake, Street. Lake Street. Yes, Lake Street. So it's another amazing, yeah, it's on Lake Street. I have seen it from the outside. I hope to go and see inside to my wife would as well. So we are lucky to have John join us. Professor John Schaefer, welcome to Middleton Plant Mission. All Thank right. You. Welcome. So we are on to the. You, you, you overemphasize what I did, but it's still fun. And I really hope when this virus is over, you can all come into this beautiful building, $50 million building just waiting to be visited and make great music. So soon. Great. Yes, yes, it would be. We have gone to the other music center, but this, is, you know, it just, I have seen it. Uh, you know, coming up from uh, when they would start digging it. So we used to use that as a parking lot was a favorite place. You know, we could just, my wife had a UW parking lot. We could just park there and go wherever we wanted. Well, not now. So now there's a, we can go to the music place there. So in any case, John, you have done great things at the university. You have made difference for this uh, University of Wisconsin Medicine campus. And you're gonna make a difference for the city of Milton here now. All well, right. Mm. I bet you will. You want to say anything? No, I just gonna okay. say thank you. You know, I've been living in a historic house in downtown Middleton for 33 years, and I love this town. And I'm very, very anxious to be involved on this committee. Very welcome to be part of it. Thank you, John. Not many people know how many distinguished people we have on our plant mission. Oh. So the next item is the, yeah, I was especially astonished. You know, I knew John Wiley as a professor of physics and the, as a chancellor. And mm -hmm. what he said at that meeting was, it, it was just amazing. So, yes. okay. The first item is the approval of the minutes. So. Move approval. Motion to. Okay, so that was. Kurt Paulson made a motion to approve, and who did the second? Kitty. Oh, Kitty did the second. Any and the, question? And, and that's the June 9th minutes. It, the agenda was listed incorrectly, so but the packet was was act was uh, okay. Right. Well, no, the right. agenda was listed correctly, but the minutes in the packet were listed as May 12th. Um, let me clarify. So the minutes were listed as June 9th. But the uh, item for the previous minutes of Google Minutes said minutes of May twenty May twelfth and should say May twenty sixth. It's just a minor correction. So, okay, so that's what we yeah. approved. So. Yeah, I thought I could as well. Okay, any other questions or comments with that modification? All those in favor of approving the plank meeting, say aye. 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 Wow. Anyone opposed? I just well, the <laughs> minutes are approved unanimously. Oh boy, these guys are so reticent. So, all right. So the first item here is the SIP. Mayor, this is Jen. I'm going to recruit myself from this vote due to my employment at DOT. 
All right, all right. Thank you, James. Okay, this is the specific implementation plan modification for design review for fence and signage. The Middleton Center phase one, two, and three, downtown Middleton. Peggy, Abby, you're gonna take it? Yes. Um, I have one modification to our staff recommendation, and that's to add that um, the new gate um, for the pedestrian crossing needs to be ADA compliant. Um, our engineering staff noted that it's proposed at 30 inches wide currently, and um, they don't they they don't think that that's wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair. So uh, we're still recommending approval of. Uh, the SIP modification as a minor modification, just with that added contingency, um, we we normally wouldn't really be too thrilled about seeing a chain link fence in our downtown. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that the fence that exists now around the dog run, um, because of the powder coated black um, coating, it it kind of does blend in relatively well. Um, they did approach the DOT and ask about a more decorative option. I think they were proposing split rail and that wasn't um, viewed upon favorably. So the, the chain link um, would be extended along the yellow part here of this drawing all the way to Parmenter Street. And then um, they would install a railing style fence, um, which is this option, if you can see where my cursor is. And that would be installed across the pedestrian gateway along phase three between the two buildings. And then also um, a small segment at the very Western edge of um, the Western building on phase three. But you're talking about these gates. Now there's still gonna be a gate. So pedestrians can cross the tracks on that path. Yes, yeah, and they need to, um, they just need to widen the gate because right now it's it's only 30 inches wide and I think it, I'm not sure what the requirement is, it might be 48 or it might even be wider to accommodate a wheelchair. But the path itself also looks narrower. Is that a problem? The path should not be narrower. <laughs> um, I think is somebody from T wall on the line that could answer that. Yeah, uh, Jake Bones here with T Wall Enterprises. Mm. Um, the path is standard. It's 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 been in our plans the whole time. It's uh, with that SIP approval. Um, yes, we can widen the gate um, to allow for ADA uh, accessibility. Mm -hmm. Does that help answer those questions? Yeah, I guess when I look at the map and I see the position of the gate at 30 inches, and then the path looks like it gets narrower than that. So. No, um, I, Presuming I the think whole it's thing just because, yeah, it, and it should be, and I can double check on that, but it might just be, uh, be because it turns a little bit, um, yeah. but I can double check on that for sure. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy. So I just want to point out to okay, so Taylor. Okay, so will be, Abby. Oh, Mayor, um, just want to point out too that the DOT wants that area restricted for residents only with key fob access. So which that, re, which they, area? They want that whole pathway to be private. Mm. I thought that that was understood mm. in the city. And that's not what we, I mean, we're open to public, but maybe that's something we discuss. So uh, at, at this point, we're looking to, we've started construction uh, this past Monday um, using our early start permit. Um, so, you know, we're doing the footings and foundations right now. We need this modification to the SIP to proceed uh, with getting our full building permit. Um, Abby, I apologize for not, if you didn't run aware of this, but um, the DOT has been changing this on us. Um, yeah, we were not aware of that. I don't think any of our staff knew that um, it would be key fob access. I think, you know, one of the big selling points from the very beginning of Middleton Center is that we were gonna be maintaining that pedestrian access across the rail corridor. And that even, you know, dictated the alignment of the buildings and where the break is and in, in the building. So that's a huge change. And it's important to us too, I think, for continuity of traffic flow, um, you know, to be able to have neighbors cross the railroad track there to visit our shops, et cetera. So, and access the downtown. So 
Um, wondering if that's something we could work with staff to, you know, I think I talked it through Scott on our construction team who's been in the railroad meetings. I talked to him today. Um, our goal was to maybe put the improvements in and then work to dedicate this as an easement to the city for public use. You know, I would I don't mean to jump in the fray at my first meeting. It was a very involved one was proposing this whole thing. And his original proposal was one solid three block wall of apartments with no access through the middle to the stores for everybody who lived on the south side of the railroad tracks. And, and to me, to suddenly lock that whole thing off and say that the only privilege to cross there is for these people in the apartments. And that's not our goal. That is what right the DOT is dictating or DOT and the railroad. I, it, they're different entities, but it's hard to keep track of. You know, us through. I would advocate whatever you can do. Yeah. So if we could work with staff to work to dedicate this to the public, is that, I mean, so my goal tonight would be, I, I want to keep this project on track. Uh, Construction is going to take 12 months. Um, would be to approve this minor modification as far as the fencing goes and then work with staff to dedicate the path um, for, for public use. Again, you know, let me take one step back. We don't want this fence. We liked having it open. We liked the look of it. Uh, I thought it was me personally. I was offended because all the other developments on the railroad did not need a fence. Um, look at every example nearby. Um, yeah. And Middleton Station is a, a brand new one, but um, it somewhat goes to the fact that this is a very narrow piece of property. It's not a, a an even rectangle. It's uh, narrower towards Parmenter and it fans out a little bit, um, which necessitated us having to put some of our found our footings on mm -hmm. part of the DOT property underground. So because we needed to be able to put our footings underground, we needed something from the DOT. That's kind of what raised this. Because as Abby will tell you, with phase one and phase two, the DOT wasn't involved. I, we never, I never asked for anything from them. We just went about our construction activities without any interference. So it's because I, we needed this footing uh, because of the narrowness of the site. If somebody takes my dog down there, lot, there's a lot of people coming out with a dog. I've, I've taken my dog there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Abby, could in our motion, could we um, could we have something in the record that says that it's the plan commission's desire on behalf of the city that this um, not be uh, restricted access and that it be dedicated to the public? I think that that's a good idea. Taylor, just to clarify, did the DOT specifically state that if this were um, a public access easement between the buildings, if this were dedicated to the public as an easement, that they would allow the crossing to just have a gate that is not locked access only? I don't know if we addressed it. I think Sean Stowski from City Engineering discussed this with our engineers. Jake Bunce is online, so Jake, you meetings please feel free to jump in um but was this something that sean said we should just make this private do you recall um i actually don't recall that was more um scott's yeah. okay so you, so we'll find out but i mean i definitely this is something i'm with the plan commission and city staff on i i think this should be public so if we could work with city engineering to make sure that this is a priority and abby if you want to relay that message to sean that would be appreciated yes i we will talk to him about it in our staff meeting tomorrow morning and as and, quick oh. background there's a public easement that runs there just so everybody knows so there's water uh, there's a water and i believe sewer yeah. hence the reason for the break in our development um, we would have preferred to do one solid um, building just for cost, but um, yep. So just as background. So Mayor, Abby, um, you will be, mm -hmm, sorry. I was go gonna ahead. tell you that Mark Opitz has his hand raised. Mark, go ahead. Hi, thank, thank you. Um, I, you actually were touching on it, Taylor, at the end. Uh, I believe that is a officially designated public rail crossing. I don't think that they, the DOT has any leverage and, and obviously we should check into this, but I think the city is on solid ground to insist that this be open to the public. And for the reasons that you stated in terms of allowing 
people to circulate between the properties, not just your residents, but all people to, to get to our business community. This was formerly a public street. This was Aurora Street. And I, I just, would yeah, be, yeah. I would be stunned if the DOT has the right to impose this uh, restriction now. I, I just can't even imagine that they have that power to do that. It's yeah. a public, I mean, maybe they have the power to do it. Yeah. And, and on behalf of the developer, I'd be willing to, you know, we can put a public access easement along, you know, to get from uh, Aurora to Terrace. Yeah. We're going to let Jennifer yeah. know that we're going to take that DOT power away in a house. Yeah, just <laughs> kidding. So, so Abby, so we can make it conditional, right? Um, approval of the fence contingent on a public access easement that would allow um, the public the public oh, yeah. to be able to cross. No, <laughs> can I just jump in? Sorry there, Abby. If we make it contingent, we can't pull our full building permit in 45 days when we need it. And we all know how slowly the, I, I don't want to knock the DOT with Jen on the line, but sometimes the DOT and the railroad take a while to coordinate. Um, it's taken us at least, I think it was uh, 10 months to get this far. Um, so if we could not make it a contingency for our SIP, yeah. for our building permit, but instead just make it a direction uh, from planning commission to city staff to, to work on obtaining that easement. This crossing has been there for 20 some years but, and it's been a public crossing. And to me, this doesn't seem to be like you're creating a new crossing and the railroad and DOT doesn't want it to be public. This has been a public crossing for 20, 30 years. The train blows its whistle every day. It crosses every day. So to me, I'm, I'm not sure who's really coming down with a heavy hand that's saying suddenly what has been for 20 years doesn't exist that way anymore. And the developer in this case is not opposed to the public use of this. And to me, this is between the railroad, the DOT and the city, since this is not on our property. But I guess and, so that I'm not sure it needs to be part of the motion. Right. That would be great. Because Taylor? I okay, so maybe you will work with the so maybe work with the staff and you will sort this out, right? Ta Taylor, when you said dedicated public easement, you were talking about not the crossing, but the area in between the fence and the railroad property, right? Repeat that again. Where was the public easement you were talking about dedicating? It, not the crossing itself. Oh, no, there. right now they're saying that right now the railroad is calling this a cri private railroad crossing. Oh. So Taylor, is, is the fence itself on your property or is it on the railroad right away? Fence is on our property. So, so you need this for what? Some other approval across? Uh, for yep. I needed, I needed to get my footings in there under subsurface property. I mean, I, I think, I mean, I'm not going to speak for the rest of the planning commission, but from my standpoint, if that crossing goes away, I mean, the, the whole approval of the development, you know, as proposed was, you know, under the assumption that that public crossing would, would remain. I, I don't think that was ever right. even consideration. There would be anything contrary to that. So, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, your argument, well, we'll, we'll put the fence in, but we have to make on our property, but we have to maintain that public access. I mean, I, we, I can't fight the fight with the DOT and the railroad. The city has to get involved in this situation, make this their, their stand that, you know, we want, we want to maintain this crossing. We want to maintain this path and this corridor. What the railroad saying is, well, somebody could just walk, what is it? 50 yards down and cross over at Parmenter and that we've been throwing our hands up this whole time saying, what do you, you know, this is, this has always been here, but um, eventually Mike, as you'll understand, we've got to get going on construction. I can't hold up over um, something in the future. And that's where I'm asking, you know, we are committed. It's good for our residents, for our uh, commercial retail users to have this as an open corridor to invite the neighborhood to come in and, and, visit our shops in the downtown and make it a vibrant you know part of the community so uh please approve the sip modification as requested so that we can pull our building permit and then we we can work with city staff in whatever regards you need to make that um or to continue 
not to make it new, but to continue the public crossing there. I mean, Taylor, you have to understand though that that the city, you know, yes, we're going to have to have these discussions as well with with DOT, but you know, we we have no leverage after yeah, you know, after we approve it. I mean, there's there's just nothing. Well, you know, we did our best and too late, too bad. You know, we're, we got to put that fence in there. And meanwhile, you're well, moving- the, the fence has to go in, which you're talking about is the gate. Well, right. I mean, we don't. So I don't the think fence is what's before you guys for approval, not the gate. The fence uh, has to go in because they don't want somebody to get hit by the train, supposedly, while they're letting except, their dog out. Except the SIP indicates a gate location. So there's not currently a gate. And you need the SIP to build the gate, right? Mm -hmm. Part of the fence. There's nothing in there that says the gate has to have a lock on it. There you go. So I didn't see that in the so, in the document. But it's said. Oh, sorry, John. Yeah, I just said it said a gate. It didn't say a locked gate. Whether they want that or not, that was not what I saw. So then, could you approve this subject to no lock on the gate? I wouldn't mind a gate yeah, if I can open the gate. In fact, I was going to suggest, Tyler, if, or Taylor, if, could we put a condition that the gate cannot be locked and then you can start pulling your building permit and if then DOT requires you to lock it, um, it would have to come back before us because as, as John has pointed out and as, as Mike has pointed out, it negates one of the key design features mm -hmm. of the development. So I, well, you'd be okay with a requirement that the gate not be locked. Yes, that'd be great. As a condition of approval, okay. Yeah, and again, right. if we can somehow work with the DOT to convince them that no fence is even necessary, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but Terrence tried to propose just like a, a white picket fence with brakes every like 10 feet. Mm -hmm. um, but the railroad understood quickly why we wanted the brakes just so that people could walk on the nice, beautiful grass there. So um, again, just trying to make this all work. So yes, if you make a condition of approval that we can't lock it, and then we can work with the city and the DOT and the railroad to come up with some amicable solution. Um, but yeah, if Abby, you could talk to tomorrow to kind of pressure them to make this a priority, that'd be appreciated. Well, it seemed like a good compromise. Uh, be, be, do you, and does everybody Here. seem to agree with this compromise? Mark Opitz has his hand raised. Hi, Mark. Hey, I have um, an email from April 17th from our city engineer regarding this topic. Uh, Scott Tebon was copied from T-Wall. Abby, you were copied. And also the R River Rail Transit Commission planner, um, Mr. Honer from Southwest Regional Planning Commission. Uh, Sean had done uh, some research and determined that there is a public access easement that exists for this pedestrian crossing. Um, it was 1981. There were state orders that accomplished a trade of street crossings of the railroad, closing Aurora and opening North High Point Road while retaining the pedestrian crossing at now vacated Aurora Street. Um, that was done per City of Middleton Resolution 1982-7, and it was recorded. Um, I don't want to read all this, but the point is there's clearly a documented history of this being a public access easement. And as I said earlier, I can't imagine, unless the DOT wants to close the, the, the crossing altogether, which involves some, some hoops, and especially if there's some documentation here that the city has some leverage in my opinion, you know, it's, it's, it can't be made a private crossing. I, I just don't know how it can be. Obviously I'm not an attorney, but I, I just, I can't imagine that that, that they can carry that, uh, that they'll carry that. And I'm happy to work on this with you, Abby and um, Taylor, because the person involved in this is uh, Lisa Stern. And I work with her husband on another project for the airport. So I'm happy to, and I know her, so I'm happy to follow up on this if you'd like me to. Yeah, that'd be great. Because a lock on a gate would frustrate a public easement. It would. It would. In my opinion, that encumbers it, yes. Yeah. Right. Well, so I think that's a good so, compromise. No lock, and Mark will work with Lisa Stern. The, the motion that, that I, I mean, no one's made a motion, but if there were to be a motion made, I would recommend it be to approve the fence and gate as a minor SIP modification 
contingent on the new gate having a width that is ADA compliant with the understanding that the crossing will remain open to public use. I would make that motion. And, and that there not be a lock allowed on the gate. I think we want to be specific yep. that it's not just open, but it's not lockable. Okay. Okay. John, are you okay with that as a friendly You're amendment? Seconding, Tom, I'll second. Yeah, and, and just a, just an additional comment, and to John's point that the pathway, assuming this is approved, is wide enough to accommodate an ADA use. It, consistent yeah. with it, the gate. That's in the motion, so. Yeah. Okay, Abby, do you want to read the motion or somebody? So it's, I, uh, uh, or you all understand it. Abby, I can read it since I have it typed. Okay, go ahead, um, Mark. Moved by Schaefer, seconded by Paulson to approve the fence and gate as a minor SOP modification, contingent on the new gate having a width that is ADA compliant with the understanding that the crossing will remain open to public use with no lock allowed on the gate. And the width of the path that it should be ADA compliant. Uh, did you add that? Yeah. But with the new gate having a width that is 88 compliant, yeah. you're also talking okay. about, the path. I mean, the path yeah, is being- I think, I think we're talking about the path as well, that we want to make sure that okay. that is 88 compliant. I would add with that the, the, new, the gate as well as the path. Okay, with the new gate and path having a width that is 88 compliant. Okay. I'm happy. Okay, with so the motion by John, second by Kurt Paulson. Any further questions or comments? I think it looks, Good. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. We are on to item number next. So this is a general implementation plan for the community of Bishop Bay, the farm and reserve hill neighborhood reloc relocate. 13 residential lot for church and school. Texas Longhorn Drive. Who's going to take it? Abby or? Mark has it. I, yep, I did okay, the step. Um, oops. Oh, you're going back to the. Okay, thank you. Um, so last November, you'll recall uh, the Planning Commission looked at the concept for this property and you were mm -hmm. quite supportive of having the church locate uh, on this site. It's, it's now about a five acre site south of Inspire, mm -hmm. the Green Fire. So it's that area shown in red. That, that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It yeah. would displace 13 cluster residential lots. Uh, those would be redistributed basically west, northwest. Um, Abby, there's a larger cluster. Yeah, if you zoom in a little, that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so towards the, um, yeah, there you go. So where you see the uh, red shaded area, although it's not showing up here now. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was showing up on this drawing. Maybe there's another drawing. Oh, there it is, yep. So where the cursor is, that's that's most of them. And then there's some up at the entrance at Ankin Road. That's like three of them. And then there's one additional one uh, to the south, about six cul-de-sacs, if you count down on the east side there. Six, uh, basically right there in the middle of the screen. Yep, yep, right there. So that's where the 13 lots would be redistributed from where the church is locating. And uh, the town of Westport, Planning Commission and Town Board uh, have both uh, expressed support uh, in a formal resolution of support. And city and planning, city planning and town of Westport staff recommend the adoption of the same uh, language uh, just to facilitate it would be on the same page between the two communities. Um, the resolution is in your packet. I don't remember what page. Um, and then the applicant is present. Uh, the, the pastors uh, Brant and Brant, I think, are both present. And uh, the developers representatives are present as well for any questions you have. Um, I did highlight one issue, and that was uh, to seek clarity from the developer regarding the implications of relocating the 13 lots elsewhere in the neighborhood. Um, and so I think that would be good to get a, I, I don't fully understand the ramifications of that yet. I reckon, you know, I think there's strong support for the church here, but we want to make sure we understand what the implications are of having the lots redistributed and the potential adjustment of the uh, boundary of the city and town and, um, 
impervious area calculations. So that's my staff report. So, so I thought the boundary doesn't change. They just redistribute those uh, 13 lots between the form and the, and the parade. Right? If you have questions, I recommend uh, consulting with the uh, applicant and the developer. Okay. So, so to answer your question, uh, that we're proposing. So, currently, it's kind of hard to tell on the screen here, but um, the existing city of city and town boundary is red. As part of the master mm -hmm. development plan, it was going to be the uh, teal line, which now I can see is kind of hard to show up. So we're proposing the magenta line, which essentially moves four acres oh. from what we were originally thinking to develop in Middleton and move that to Westport. The goal there is to maintain the um, same dwellings per acre, or the same density per the master development plan per this application. Um, we're allowed 2.3 dwellings per acre in the farm neighborhood. We were at 1.6. We wanted to maintain that 1.6 dwellings per acre, so that same density. So we decided to redraw the line a little bit uh, by four acres to um, to maintain the same density for the town of Westport. So Taylor, just to, just to clarify for everyone, you're just reallocating lots within the farm and the boundaries of the farm are completely within the town of Westport, not the city. That's correct. And so the only, the reason the boundary is gonna to change to the, I don't know if Abby can zoom in, but that new um, magenta line is to keep a distinction between keeping the farm in the town and that next neighborhood, I forget what it's called, in the city. That's correct, the reserve hills. The reserve hills. So Taylor, to clarify, um, in order to meet the the dwelling units per acre in Westport, you had to add four acres into Westport um, so that you could get those 13 extra units. But then that will de decrease the dwelling units on the Middleton side, correct? Because you would have the, you would run into that same issue where there was a maximum dwelling units per acre in the Middleton portion of the development, and now you have four fewer acres. Is that correct? Um, it's not as clear as that. I see how that would make sense when you say that, but when we review it with our engineers, um, even if we cram as many lots as possible in the reserve hill, we still don't hit the, the density allowed under the MDP. So we're still short. So this four acres doesn't materially impact what we're allowed to develop in the reserve hill. Um, and based on our discussions with Middleton staff, um, they're looking for reserve or the the goal right now in Reserve Hill is to have higher density so that we can keep the lots more affordable so that we can provide more affordable housing for Middleton. Um, so unlike the farm and the prairie and the back nine neighborhoods which are developed you know which are currently in process of being developed which have larger more expensive lots, we're trying to target a more entry, um, market lot that's that's more affordable for more people so to me I don't think based on our review of what we're going to develop in the reserve hill these four acres doesn't materially make a difference to Westport the four acres made a, a big difference because it wasn't just us reallocating these 13 lots within the existing boundaries but kind of um, modifying the boundaries a little and again and again to highlight it's that it's not that we're moving four acres out of Middleton, it's that we're keeping four acres in Westport. And so again, just for more clarification for, because it seems like we've been through this a number of times, you have not uh, submitted an SAP for Reserve Hills, right? That's correct. We haven't submitted an SAP for any of the future farm development either. Right, and there's no SAP for the farm. So we'd still have to, do the site level kind of engineering and impervious service on those new proposed lots. And exactly. this is, um, and in the master development plan, 
every neighborhood had both a total number of units that was allowed, but then also a maximum density. Is that correct? That's correct. So it, it like a lot of the uh, revisions and tweaks to the whole community plan, at some point in time, it'll always come down to math, which is how many units are allowed, what's the density, um, and that is usually at the SIP stage when we count up the number of housing lots you propose in the reserve hill. Exactly, and not to get into the, the total weeds here, just because it's all over what I have prepared, but um, at this point, we developed less houses in back nine, and uh, we're about 120 lots less in the farm and prairie in the Westport development. So um, Westport only, want, oh, it's a lot of back and forth, but we're only doing yeah. 394 lots in Westport. Um, the original MDP had like 550 or something like that. So, um, there's, so, there's so again, no we're under what, but, but we're not doing the GIP at this point for Reserve Hill even. I think we'd have to do a GIP before we do an SAP for Reserve Hill. Yeah. Um, but and, there's no provision in the master development plan that unused units in one neighborhood automatically get reallocated or transferred to other neighborhoods. I'd have to right. double check. There's it's it's vague language, and I don't have it ready today. But um, it says that you know there's six hundred or six one thousand three hundred fifty residential lots total for the entire development, and then there's uh, density specified for each neighborhood. So it doesn't, to my recollection, and I can follow up with you guys on that if you'd prefer. Um, get into the number of lot max lots per neighborhood. Right, but that's not. That's just for information. That's not before us. The town has no problem with reallocating these 13 lots. Right. The, the, yeah, the discussion with Westport was um, they're, they're not agreeing to these exact locations of these 13 lots, but they agree that in principle, they agreed to 394 lots, and that's not going to change so that we can redistribute these 13 lots subject to working out a future SIP on where they go. Um, and, and also I've just had these discussions with Mark, but that's also, I, I feel like we'd address the impervious area and the stormwater requirements at the SIP level for each future phase in the farm neighborhood. So if I could ask, wow, what is Westport opposing? What they're, they're, uh, they're not opposing, they're just saying we're not agreeing to these thir these locations yet because this is the okay. GIP level. They're just saying in concept, you can move these 13 lots. And I don't, I don't want to speak for Tom, but the mm -hmm. agreement wasn't these. Yes, this is exactly where what we want this to look <laughs> like. It's come back to us with an SAP when you're ready for those future phases on, on how those lots look, where the roads are exactly going. Because again, at this level, it's still, you know, we're looking for an MDP amendment in the GIP. Okay, may I ask a question there? Um, yeah, go Mark, ahead. really quick though, before you ask the question, um, Commissioner Tyson has had her hand raised for oh, a while. We haven't been able to jump in. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Um, a couple pages deeper into this packet, it's on page 23 of 37. There is a plan that labels uh, something that I had a question about a while ago. And um, it's the existence, it's the relocation of the athletic field slash play space. And I, I can see that somebody has listed this area as that, but um, I, I also want to compare that with the renderings of the church. Is, is this phase three um, plan right here, is that part of the church? And therefore we're looking at the south east end of the church or the entry of the church? Or am I misreading this plan? I can answer that question. Uh, the renderings that you see are really only the dark square labeled phase one. Um, so then future phases would obviously be expanded. And right now those are just, where would those fit and how would they fit within the larger scheme of what we hope to accomplish out of those spaces? So yeah, phase three is down the road, obviously, but we do would want to save some space for, you know, obviously athletics. And that's why we marked it on there. It doesn't look like there's enough space there though. How big yeah. is that area? And, and it's right next to, is, is that going to be the ultimate church or is that a, a, a communication? 
communication or assembly space or what is it? No, that would be more of the um, educational aspect of, of the oh, church ministry. Gotcha. So that would okay. probably be more of the school or, um, you know, more compatible. Along the, exactly, more compatible okay. with that. Okay, yeah. how wide is that for an athletic field? It, it looks kind of narrow. Don't if, know. If I could interject, Kitty. Yeah. Phase two, if you look at the diagram, phase one is the fellowship hall. That's the first phase to build. It's okay. just a multi-purpose building. Phase two, I don't know if you can see the cursor, yep. area is where the church will be. That's gotcha. the church. All phase right, thank you. Three is just the education. And the idea would be it would probably comply with one of keys um, only going up to a fifth grade potential for the school. So you wouldn't have regulation soccer fields and those kind of things. Well, but I, I thought we were looking for more of a, a, a play space that was capable of handling something like soccer and that sort of thing on this part of town. Well, I think that would be part of the plan, but they might not be regulation or like a high school or something like that. It depends on the grade level. Oh, uh, well, given setbacks and so on, it, it concerns me that how wide this space is, you know? Can I jump in for a second? It, when working with the church, phase three is 10 years, 15 years off. And at this point, they're not looking to propose specifics but more just putting stuff on paper for phase three. Phase one and two is kind of what they're seeking approval for. Yeah, it's just that when you um, plan out all the space and it's gone, it, you know, 10 years from now, it's still gone. Yeah. Just Abby, can, can we ask you to pull up a pen, exhibit A on the same uh, package? Because uh, we discussed this at the concept stage, as, as Kitty remembers, the that kind of green shaded area to the east of that property that's the open space athletic field or because it, the land was originally going to be in individual lots so it's not like a park is disappearing in the rezone area i'm just trying to remember the boundaries of this yeah at one point that athletic field was actually big enough for some sports games and now it's getting pretty skinny given the setback of the property. There's, next, next there's to, the, sorry, there's potential that to the right there, so to the east in that lime green area to get an easement there for playing fields. But that's along Highway M. That's 250, uh, 250 plus feet. Uh, what I'm looking at though is the, the width of that little property on the south side of phase three is very narrow it, it looks like if yeah if you're saying that that setback from highway m is 250 feet then i'm wrong because that width is probably 200 feet so i'm, I'm just asking if we can fit an, a real athletic field in that space which looks skinny is that something you'd like specified at the sip level Definitely. Okay. So Pastor Brands, if you could make note when you guys submit your SIP, if you could. Would that um, be the SIP for phase three? No, uh, they're thinking that SIP for phase one and two, if you could include some future feasibility for uh, fitting a building in, in a playing field. Um, we can do concept, I would imagine, but just, just so you know, even the, the parameters of the actual footprint of the building are still up for grabs. I mean, that phase three might be smaller to accommodate an athletic field. Um, just our needs right now, uh, we're the focusing on phase one, which is partially why we're here. So I guess I can say we just haven't thought that far ahead yet, other than that we'd like to have a school and we'd like to have an athletic field with it. But I understand why, you know, obviously that would be something that would be worth asking. But it's, it's important for uh, Commissioner Tyson's concerns to be expressed in the notes so that when any SIP for future phases is looked at, I mean, it would still need to comply with the town of Westport's open space um, requirements. 
and it's still part of the community of Bishop's Bay, so it would count for the overall open space requirements in the whole development, right? Right. Yeah, I think we can do that. I think we can address that. See, and one of the whole questions comes in, even the feasibility of the school, how feasible will it be in the community as these homes come in? What's the age of the children? I mean, all those things tie in. But yeah, it, with the school, you'll need athletic facilities. Yes, I think we can do that, Kitty. Good. So the answer is yes, we will do that. <laughs> all right, that's a good compromise. So any other questions? Well, the only other question raised then was the um, impervious surface of the church itself. And Taylor seems to be saying that's something we address at the SIP stage. Um, but the question to me is, at the GIP amendment stage, we're creating a land use category, or are we adopting an existing land use category within the master development plan? The C, the commerce, does that have its own impervious surface requirement? Mark, you're gonna, yes. We're adopting an existing um, use under our MDP. So there's already requirements there, as well as complying with the county's stormwater requirements, which may be changing soon. So as the, as the county gets more restrictive, our development needs to adapt to that at each SIP. So the impervious surface re issue raised in the emails is not really relevant at this stage? Not to get contentious, I don't think so. I, I think we'll deal with this um, at the SIP level. Veerbecker, once we get approval, the church was trying to conserve costs here um, at our recommendation. So they thought, let's just get the GIP and MDP amendment approved and then start to work on the design specifics such as stormwater control measures, et cetera. As you can imagine that costs a lot of money. So they wanted the green light at this stage before they spent the next commitment of money with the engineers and architects. But yes, Veer Becker already has initial plans on where they're gonna put the stormwater here. And you will also need DIA so many things. So I guess you're right. So any other questions? More questions here? So if there are no more questions, we need a motion. M Mayor, I had some questions or a couple questions that have come yes. up. In Go ahead. Um, so I've been looking through the master development plan. Um, Taylor, you made a comment earlier about uh, needing a GIP for Reserve Hill and other phases. Did I hear you say that correctly? Uh, because the, the master development plan serves as the GIP for the entire development. That's Those correct. Are... But we'd have to do an SIP for each phase. That, that is correct. Hill. But you, you mentioned GIP earlier. Well, each, yeah, we, we did do an a GIP for Westport laying out the entirety of the farm and prairie. So we'd probably do something. I don't know what you want to call it, but a master well, SIP for the entire reserve hill and then that, sub. That is fine. But we, we currently have a GIP pertaining to the entire Bishop's Bay property. So I you're right. You're right, Mark. Yep. That's, that's what I'm trying to point out. Um, and then in terms of uh, Commissioner Paulson, I think was the one who asked about impervious surfaces. Under cluster residential, our the master development plan says, which is the GIP says 60% 60, 60 maximum for cluster residential. And then the commerce is maximum of 80% or 100% if the lot is part of a zero lot line Main Street, Main Street development. So, um, which is why I raised the, the concern about in the emails about impervious surface area because I felt that this was going to be increasing impervious surface. And I, given all the concern about stormwater these days, I just wanted to make sure that we had a full understanding of what the implications of that are. So that's that's all I had. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that the, I forgot to mention that the town of Westport and Middleton's joint zoning committee is having a public hearing on this on Thursday, June 25th at 6 p.m. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions or comments? So. I'll make a motion if, if Mark can help me. The motion is to recommend approval of the GIP amendment um, with contingencies, but what were the contingencies? 
Mark. Uh, yeah, I'm going back to my staff comments here. Um, the only contingencies were I didn't, yeah, the I didn't. understanding understanding that the 13 lots would stay in the farm neighborhood and be subject to those I, that GIP. Yeah, I would refer you to the resolution from the town of Westport um, on page 26 of the packet. Um, and that was the language that Tom Wilson, the uh, town administrator, recommended is, be something that be uh, adopted by the city as well, ultimately. Um, so they had a resolved uh, clause toward the bottom of that page that had 13 uh, contingencies, okay. if you will. So I'll make my motion that we recommend approval of the uh, GIP amendment with the condition with the conditions outlined in the uh, town resolution 20-04. This is Murray second. Okay. Okay, motion by Kurt Paulson, second I, by Jennifer Murray. I okay. would like to, I would like to see us um, state that they will identify a layout um, of the athletic field and the dimensions thereof. Didn't we say we were going to add that? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's... Identify okay. of the athletic field. They will field. identify athletic fields in um, all phases of SIP submission. Yeah. Could you clarify that, Kurt? I'm sorry, I didn't follow you. That they will identify uh, locations and layout of athletic fields at the SIP phase. For, for this. But what, but what we really want is SIP for phase one should show the athletic fields for phase two and three is what Kitty was asking for. So that they don't run out of space with phase three. The athletic field for the entire project should be laid out in the SIP for phase one. Yes. Wherever the athletic field or fields are going to be. When you say the entire project, you mean all of Community Bishops Bay? No, I think she's talking about the, the, yeah, the church tree zoning. The... Okay, because that's, that's why I'm confused. Um, so you're talking about just this rezoning request for the church. Yep. Yep. Yes, yep. yes, because this is where they, they had located the uh, right. athletic field before. So we want to make sure it's still there. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, it's a church and a school and the field. So, okay, any other questions or comments? So that's added to the 13 condition from the town of Westport. Anything else? Otherwise, the motion has been made by Kurt Paulson and, and second by Jennifer Murray. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. All right. <laughs> now we move on to the next phase. These are the Appointments, uh, okay, item number three, appointments to the airport master plan advisory committee. And uh, I have talked to most of you and I think uh, this is the position which Leif Hubbard had and uh, I'm going to nominate uh, um, John Schaefer for this position. I have talked to him, he's agreed to it. I think he will be considering what he did at UW if we could do a little bit of that magic here, we probably will be done with this stuff very soon. You mean raising $26 I'll million? Second. Dollars. I'll second I'll that. Yeah, I'll well, second. bringing people together. <clears throat> okay, so I need a second. Nominations actually, well, whatever. You don't need a second. I yeah. so you don't need a second? Okay. I'll do it anyway. Actually, t I'm, you know, because this isn't for an officer position, this is for a representative, so it's like a motion. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay, okay, well, all right, so. Who seconded? Yeah, my motion is to. Kitty. Okay, 
Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. Good luck, John. So, Thank you. I'll need it. I've read the papers. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one is appointment to the Milton Westport Joint Zoning Committee. So there are three positions here. Kurt has from 19 to 22, and uh, Jennifer has from 2018 to 21. And uh, this is the position which uh, uh, Leaf had. And uh, yes, so who I, would Mayor, be? I, yep. I nominate Mike Slavish. <laughs> OK. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> I did a, email him ahead of time to check to see if it's OK. <laughs> do we need a second or we don't need a I'll second, second. Here, do we? Ramsey will okay. second. Then Ramsey seconded, so. Any questions or comments? All those are in favor of the motion to appoint Mike Slavish to the Milton Westport Joint Zoning Committee say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Appointment to pedestrian bicycle and transit committee. And I think uh, the elder Dan Ramsey is doing a great job there. And the North Modota Trailway is moving forward. I'm going to nominate uh, Dan Ramsey for this. I'll second. Okay, Kurt Parsons second. Any questions or comments? Any questions? Or, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. The last one, appointment to workforce housing committee. I know that uh, Kurt Paulson played a big role in getting this from ad hoc to the regular committee. And uh, he's very interested in this committee. So I have a one principle which you probably know that uh, when I point, you know, I don't point anyone to more than one committee. And I would like, uh, you know, this is the, again, the plan commission having uh, one person serving on two committees. Uh, Kurt is on uh, that uh, Westport and Milton. So I, I know he's very interested and I don't have any problem. This is a, um, he will do a great job. He used to be chair of that committee. And uh, so, but as long as we can somehow work out uh, the arrangement, if someone is interested, then in, uh, um, we can trade that one position when and if needed. I I'd be happy to nominate him to this workforce housing committee. Oh, uh, uh, well, Mr. Mayor, I, I will nominate uh, uh, Kurt for, I think he's most qualified for it. So I, I would nominate him for workforce housing without any condition. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. okay. What what the mayor means is if, if someone desperately wants to be on the Middleton Westport joining zoning commission, I can easily yield my spot because <laughs> but people are not okay. usually well, be beating down the door. Well let me yeah. let me try something here. And I'm not exactly sure how what the uh Robert's rules of orders are for it, but um I would like to I'm, I'm sure Kurt would do an awesome job, but I would like to nominate a gentleman who's, whose uh, employment is all about workforce housing. I'd like to nominate Mike Slavish to this position. Thanks, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will second it. So does that mean we're on two committees? Just Claire trying to clarify that. <laughs> well, uh, no, you will. Uh, you, yeah, I would have a problem with that one. We will have to, you know, if you're on this one, you will uh, probably relinquish the other one. So. Yeah, and Mayor, as I told you earlier, I'm 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 fine either way. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm fine either way. Okay, so. Um, Let's, uh, I guess we're going to have a roll call vote then. Okay, so let's start. 
-hmm. For clarification, these were both motions. So instead you're treating them as nominations. Is that how you're uh, treating them? Because otherwise no, they are seconded by Murray, Ramsey and Murray. And now I hear a motion by Tyson and Barr, which I guess would have to be a substitute motion. I don't know how else you're going to deal with that otherwise from a, from a parliamentary. Oh, person. okay. Well, that's fine. It can be so, nominations. Well, it if can you be want nominations. To put, oh, okay. So they are, so we're treating them as yeah. nominations. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, you mean having two people or just voting no, on I one or the to, other? I just yeah. need to know how the minutes should be recorded. Oh. Oh, okay. So, so let's go over all those in favor of the, uh, Appointing Mike Slavish to the Workforce Housing and um, say aye. 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 Okay, so. Um, Do you want a roll call on that? And I, I understood. I thought if we were doing nominations, we were simply going to call roll and each right. commissioner was going to state who they were voting for. Okay. That's all the right. way we should do it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, um, so to clarify, we have a nomination for Paulson and we have a nomination for Slavish. So when okay. we call roll, you need to either state Paulson or Slavish. Okay. Okay, I start and it's for Slavish. Murray. Slavish. Paulson. Paulson. Ramsey. Paulson. Schaefer. Hey, can I abstain? Because I don't know anybody. <laughs> John, you okay. can't go wrong with Mike Slavish. <laughs> um, Slavish? Do, do I vote? I mean, do you vote for yes. this? Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, what's this? What's the count right now? <laughs> um, two and two. Two, two. Who else is voting? Kitty, are you voting yet? Yeah, I'm still voting. Kitty and Paulson, Mike still have to vote. Paulson voted for himself, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's an excellent choice. So, um, you know, I'll, I'm, I, this is my industry, so I'll, I'll vote for myself. And Tyson. Slavish. But Kurt's a great guy. Smart okay. man. Okay, so the slavish wins four two and one abstention. So we're calling okay. that the mayor. I mean, it's <laughs> congratulations. Hi guys, uh, thank you both. Mike. And great job, Kurt. So let's. And we've both been on it before, so. Yes, we have. Need a motion to adjourn. Whoa, 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 whoa! What about Kitty? Kitty, what are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. On, I'm so on the plan yeah. commission. Okay. Well, All right. No, you're going 20. to. Okay, so you're going to let that your position on the uh, airport on Westport go. So right. how do we handle so that, that now? No. No, no, he is, so. I'm fine, okay. no, no problems. No, no, okay, so okay. I'm going to nominate uh, Kitty Tyson. We, we already voted. We no, voted. We're, we're done. Okay, okay, so how do we go about it now? Okay, well, we can handle at the next meeting then. <laughs> well, you violated your own rule, it seems to me, about Pardon two me? people. Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. So it's getting late. But yeah. uh, but Mike can resign his motion to adjourn. There and, yeah, so we can handle oh. it next meeting. Okay, oh, okay, motion to adjourn. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, need a second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 